On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1974. We're going to be taking a look at Emerson, Lake and Palmer, more specifically Greg Lake performing Still You Turn Me On. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So let's get Greg and his 12 string up on screen and see how he gets on. There is so much in this performance that if you don't play the guitar or sing, you probably won't get an appreciation of the level that Greg is performing at here. The amount of picking going on with the guitar, he's got some hybrid picking going on as well, and arpeggiating the chords, it is pretty much perfectly picked throughout the whole performance. He doesn't miss a string. And he's playing a 12 string here, so it means that they are gonna be two strings next to each other, holding down two strings at once with each finger. But the vocal as well, which is so spot on pitch wise, and the vibrato, the control, it's amazing how much there is just thrown into this one performance and how seamlessly Greg performs it. When talking about Emerson, Lake and Palmer, they were very much on the progressive side of things as a band, whereas this song was very much mainstream and a soft ballad in order to make the album that it was released with, which is called Brain Salad Surgery in 1973, so the year before this performance, 
it was just to make that album a little bit lighter because there's a lot of heavy, aggressive rock on that album. And this wasn't actually released as a single because it was seen as a little bit too soft. And also Carl Palmer didn't play at all on this song on the original record. Just mentioning as well that Keith Emerson did play on the recorded version of this song, but it was purely written by Greg. And the thing about this song is that we have a progression that is complex, but halfway through the song, we start over. So once you have heard it through once as a song, you can rewind it and you've got a little bit of a point of reference because you know that you're just gonna get another repetition of the progression you've already heard. But we have some great chord voicings going on here. We're gonna get the guitar out in a second so that we can go through some of the chords, but I'm probably just gonna show you guys how to play it very quickly rather than go through all of the chord variations and the voicings because we would be here all year. It is in drop D, so you have to get your low E string down to D in order to play along. Just to expand on that point of sounding more progressive because your chord progressions go on for longer before repeating themselves. And in mainstream pop, you can have songs that are a two or a three or a four chord wonder, and it just repeats over and over and over again. So it means that on your journey, you're just seeing the same sights over and over again. Whereas when you have a more progressive sound and a progressive band, they'll start to throw in seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 15 chords before then repeating them again. So it means that you don't really get a point of reference early on in the progression and you're not seeing the same sights so regularly. So this is why when you have a progression like this, you have to wait until halfway through the song before you then go back to the beginning of your journey and then go to see the same sights that you've just seen. So you're probably already starting to get a grasp on the fact that the less chords you have in your song, the more accessible to a mainstream audience it will be because the journey is very straightforward and there aren't very many sites. It's just gonna be really melodic, really simple to get your head around. And once you've heard the song once, you can pretty much repeat it because it's only three or four chords. Whereas more progressive bands, you have to listen to the song quite a few times in order to spot all of the chord changes and get to grasp with that full progression. The great thing is that when you have a great song that is progressive, it's all down to melody and the use of melody over different chord voicings and the chord changes. So then the more you listen to it, the more you can start to appreciate how the melody interacts with the chords in the background because there are so many changes. And you'll find that when you are listening to very progressive bands, you have to listen to maybe three or four or five minutes worth of progression before you start to get a handle on where they're going. And you'll have to rewind it back to the beginning of the song in order to appreciate the journey again. Something to mention is that this is not easy to do. To put together a chord progression like this with the chord voicings and make it sound mainstream and also make it sound like it could be on a radio playlist because of the melody that Greg has placed into his vocal, that's what just dances over the top of these chords in the background, also the arpeggios, bringing out each note of each chord really gets the guitar to sing in the background underneath the vocal. So you get such a compliment between the guitar and the vocal, it just sits so well together. It's the fact that Greg is so spot on pitch wise with his vocal expression as well. So we can also mention the fact that Greg is playing and singing at the same time here. I always say that it doubles the difficulty, but you can ramp that up a notch if you are playing finger style or playing riffs and singing at the same time. And here we have this constant picking going on with that right hand just working its way through the chords, but also making sure that every single chord position is as clean as it can be. And throughout this whole performance, listen to that 12 string because I didn't hear a buzz on any note of any of the chords. It is flawlessly played throughout this whole performance. Considering that he's singing at the same time, it is top level playing, top level singing, and just a top level performance all round. I'm gonna say at this point, I don't want this video to go on for too long, but it might do because we're gonna get into the playing here 
to hopefully give you guys an appreciation of what Greg is doing while singing at the same time. If you are wanting to play along with this, you'll need to detune that low E string to a D, and it means that when you do pick through your D chord, we'll be going from that first string. But anyway, we're starting on a G, and you'll have to fret the fifth fret of your low, what would be E string, but it's a D string, in order to get the G there, and you want to skip over the A string so that we get that sound. As you can see, a really important part of the technique here with picking is to do an upstroke when you get to that high E string because you want to be coming back towards the strings that you then want to pick. So we've got this G skipping over the A string with the picking. Then we're shifting down. And as you could hear there, in terms of my shape here, if you get into your simplified F shape and stick your little finger on the third fret of that high E string, you'll get that F ninth sound. But then take off your second finger and play the low D string. And with the picking, skip over the A string again. And you should get that sound. So, an important thing to mention technique-wise here again, and you'll see Greg do this when he changes to this chord. When he starts on his G, he goes down to the open D string at the bottom, and he places on his third and his first finger first before the little finger, and then he places on the little finger just before he needs it. So it means that He's not rushing into that chord shape because you don't need that high E string where the little finger is until the last pick of that chord. So you can buy yourself a little bit of time. You could even break it down to placing on your third finger first, first finger, and then little finger just as you need them. It'll make your chord changes so much more efficient if you're not worrying about clamping on your whole hand at the same time, but just playing the note or fretting the note just before you need it. So for example, and you might have seen there the way that I approached the second chord was by placing my third finger in, then my first, and then my little finger just before I needed them. So I wasn't having to rush and panic into that chord shape. I knew I've got some time to put that first finger little finger on because I've still got to pick three strings before I get there. So after these two chords of the verse, we then want to be getting into this B 11th shape. Like that. And the simplest way to get into this is, imagine playing a D chord, but starting on your A string. And you'll get that sound. And you just want to place your little finger on the B string, the next string down from your second finger, and keep it on the same fret as your third finger. So we get, and leave that high E string open get that sound. So once we've got this, then move your first finger down one fret, and do the same picking sequence on that right hand, then let go of everything apart from your little finger and do the same picking. And then we're going momentarily into an A seventh, So that rundown we've got. And we're jumping early to the D here. So when we get to the A seventh, you wanna do that. Get straight into your D, skipping over the A string here. Do a little pull off on that high E string to the sus2, pick the B string and the G, and then stretch up with your little finger and fret that 
fifth fret if you can reach that high. If you've got smaller hands and smaller fingers, then maybe it will be a case of barring over with the D and barring with that first finger, placing in your second finger. You'll have to do two upstrokes for that. And then it will give you that B, G, but you should be able to reach out a little bit easier if you're using your first and your second finger in order to play that D down there. I can sense that this is gonna take a while to get through, so we're gonna rush through the chords from here on in. If you play an F and bring your third in your little finger towards you by a string, leave your D string open and place in the rest of your chord up at the top there. We should have that kind of sound. Then take your third and your little finger off the guitar, play that first D string and I'm now placing on my third and my little finger like that and just do it once. The second time, it's just a slightly different phrasing to it, but that's how it goes there. Once you play through that, keep your third finger and your little finger where they are. Place your first finger on the first fret of the A string. You should get that sound. Go down to the open string. And then go to an A seventh. From the A seventh, you're then ready to jump into the D minor. We've got a little pull off there on that first fret. And this is where we get into the run up. Like that. So that was, again, first fret of the A. And now you're just leaving your little finger on the third fret of the B string. Place your third finger on the third fret of the A string, same picking on the right hand. So you want to play the D twice through to begin with, then picking. Now we go straight into the picking after the D. Kind of like that, which gets us into our hybrid picking here, so I'm using my second and my third finger to play the high E string and the B string, and I'm just barring those with my little finger, and I'm bringing my thumb over the bottom of the guitar here, playing the first fret of that low D string. So timing-wise, that's gonna be. And it's quite softly played. There's a definite conscious effort to slow down the tempo as well. Then we get into. that. And in the video it looks like Greg is playing that with his first finger just barring on the 10th fret and placing in that third finger on the 12th fret of the G. So having this like that and also you can hit that high E string if you want to. With the 12 string obviously there's a lot going on there on the high end of the guitar but I'm making this sound relatively similar on the sixth string, that's the aim. Anyway, if you do want to get that high E string involved, you can bar across the high E string, the B string, and the G string. And you'll get that kind of sound. And I was just doing exactly the same thing that I did before. Instead of letting that high E string ring out, I'm barring all the way across it. Like that, exactly the same principle here. But I quite like the sound of that high E string ringing out. Generally, if something's being played on a 12 string and you're trying to simulate it on the six string, letting strings ring out where you can is probably gonna help fill in that sound. And just to finish off, when you've played through, the very final time, we're going to a A C add nine, effectively. Again, just using that pick on your A string and using that second and third finger to 
pluck the B string and the high E string. So a lot of interesting stuff going on here from a guitar perspective. And if you are learning to play this, I suggest just learn it in sections and then just put those sections together at the end and minimize the amount of rest you have between your sections just to keep it organized in your head because there are a lot of changes here. The thing about this video and the performance that we've just watched is that it is so misleading because Greg is doing all of this on a 12 string and singing at the same time, never missing a beat, playing it perfectly and just making it look massively easy when it is anything but. But thank you guys for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.